Greetings and salutations to you all once again. It is me, the Ravenous Specter. I humbly apologize right now that I'm actually recording this on my phone because my webcam wants to be a fucking prick. Yeah, I think that there was a new Windows 10 update that had happened recently and it just fucked it right up. So I went to the website to end up downloading new drivers and all of that, did everything I was supposed to, and the launcher isn't working. So I don't know what it is. I'm talking to a PC guru friend of mine and we'll see if we can work something out with that. But that's not going to stop me because it wants to be a little prick. It makes me just want to snap it in half and just burn it and then buy a new one. Maybe one that's a hell of a lot more superior than that piece of shit. Sorry, I'm ranting a little bit because you try to fix something and it doesn't work and you just want to make it not work anymore, period, by just breaking the motherfucker. Anyway, sorry. Didn't mean to get a little off on that, but whatever. Uh, this is the next episode in the Journey Onward series. Fuck you, webcam. <sighs> sorry for the quality. Sorry for all of that. Can't really do nothing about it, so... Oh, well, at least I'm making a video, right? There you go. Uh, this is the next episode in the Journey Onward series, and uh, this is basically a weekly uh, episodic thing that I do where I discuss about what I'm playing throughout the week, and if you guys want to, you can leave little comments below, and we can have a little discussion on things that you're playing, or things that I'm playing, or things that we're both playing, <coughs> excuse me, or whatnot, things of that nature. So, anyways, we'll go ahead and get started off. I went back to playing The Witcher 3 again, as a matter of fact. I had beaten the main story. I've beaten both the DLCs. I haven't done all of the quests because there's so many freaking quests in the game. Um, some of them I won't bother to do. Some of them I will. I think I actually said that on my previous video as well, which, you know, makes perfect sense. And it seems like I'm going from week to week playing The Witcher 3, knowing how massive it is. But there really hasn't been anything that's really changed with that. I've just kind of been exploring the world and trying to see, you know, if there's anything new that I can get into. I actually went to a map, as a matter of fact, to try to see if there was anything new that I haven't seen or haven't checked out, and I, I can't really see anything that I haven't really came across, and I believe maybe there's a trophy you can get for actually playing all the quests or completing all the quests or something like that, or at least most of them, I suppose. I'm guessing there's some of them you can't. I, I, at least I don't think so, determining on what type of decisions that you make. So, anyways, with that aside... I've, once again, kind of been in an open-world gaming kind of mood, because I've also been playing, I went back to a playing uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate again, and trying to get a little bit farther in that, because I'm trying to level myself up, level my assassins up and all that for me to be able to push forward into the, the main story, because as you go along, those levels, those levels, those levels that you get, you know, you go higher and higher, and the quests that you go on get higher and higher in level, so you have to you know, grind a little bit, I guess you could say, by uh, going on Templar hunts and taking them out or, you know, taking out all of the uh, the rival gang faction or whatever that's in the game. And uh, so, yeah, I've been doing that. I've been having fun with that. Um, and also been playing a little bit of Mad Max as well. Back on that again. It's a whole open world vibe, you know, <laughs> with me lately. It's, it's crazy. But I've always been a fan of open world games. I, I always have... I love going in the open worlds and just doing what I want to do and whatever happens, happens, and I just love it. Which, Speaking of which, next month, Mafia 3 is going to be out. Going to buy it day one. Really excited for it. I, I just, there's so much hype for this for me, I'm just, I'm ready to play it. You know, I'm just, I'm really ready. That's one of my main games that I'm excited for uh, coming up near, near the end of the year. Uh, I have a small list of them. <laughs> but, uh, oh, and, matter of fact, I ended up getting Dragon Quest Seven, which I'm definitely excited for. Just recently started playing that. I think it's called Fragments of the Past, something like that. It was based on the PlayStation 1 title. It's like a remake, if you will. And they actually kind of can like shrunk it down a little bit where it won't be as long, you know, where there's a whole lot of filler and all that crap like it was in the PlayStation 1 version. And I'm liking what I'm seeing. I like the visuals. I really like the character designs. You know, Akira Toriyama, who ends up doing the Dragon Ball Z series, he ended up doing the character designs, just as he always had with the Dragon Quest series. And I'm really, really, uh, re really liking it, trying, trying to get into it. Uh, well, not getting in, trying to. I am getting into it. It's very colorful. It's, it's fun. All of that. I love the music. It's really whimsical. You know, obviously the enemy designs, especially the way that they've designed them in this game to just make them come out and come alive is amazing and I love how it's just not when you're fighting you're not just battling and you're just doing your moves and it's showing what type of an effects or something that you're having on your enemies like it used to in the older games um, it's really showing when you do an attack or magic attack or anything like that 
the camera zoom back a bit and show your three, three or four characters or whatever actually attacking or doing that move, which is all well and good, which is what I want. You know, because I, I, I can't really stand that whole first-person turn-based RPG style. I just, I don't like the look of it. It's just not really my thing. Um, so yeah, uh, been playing that, or really digging it for sure. Uh, back on Trails of Cold Steel, I can only play so much of that thing before I just have to give it a break because of so much damn dialogue and long-ass cutscenes, man. <laughs> I do I do like it, but I have to be in a certain mood to play it. Hopefully, sometime in the future, I'll actually be able to play the damn second game because it's just it's weighing on me right now. Maybe I'm just not really in the mood for that particular kind of RPG. I guess, you know, knowing just how long and drawn out certain things are, but everything else is great. Uh, been playing, uh, one other game that I can think of at the moment that I've been playing this past week has been Zenith. And it is basically this gaming generation's Bard Tale. Bard's Tale. If you've never played Bard's Tale, it's a humorous type of action role-playing game. And it, like, makes fun of a lot of different things, like other RPGs and things of that nature. But in Zenith, it makes fun of other RPGs and it also makes fun of movies and other games and things of that, things, things like that. The, the humor is the main thing that kind of really pushes it along. Um, the gameplay is just, uh, to me, it's a little stale. It's kind of like generic action role-playing. Uh, from what I've seen so far, there's not really anything that really just makes me say, oh my god, this is amazing combat, because honestly, some of the combat pisses me off. <laughs> it really does. Like, there's no difficulty level, so I find myself rolling a whole lot to get out of the way of an attacks. I find myself actually using ranged attacks a lot. Um unless I can kind of wear down my enemy a bit with ranged attacks, and then I'll be able to go ahead and use my physical attacks. You know, it's just, especially boss battles, too, there's a whole lot of rolling. They ought to give you a trophy for rolling the whole lot in this game and dodging, because from the experience that I've been having, there's been a whole hell of a lot of it, <laughs> without a doubt. But there's been a, I've gotten a lot of good good laughs out of it, good chuckles and whatnot out of Zenith. Um, and I really, <laughs> the, the thing that really kind of really gets to me is the fact that they make fun of Final, which you know they're going to make fun of Final, Final, blah, blah, blah. they were going to make fun of the Final Fantasy series anyway. So they made fun of Cloud, they made fun of Aerith, they made fun of Titus, and they made fun of um, they made fun of uh, well actually those those are the main three. There's another character in there, but she doesn't have anything. She's not like she's a parody or anything. And some of the dialogue and things that they have, and some of the scenes that you see them in, at least the one I've seen so far, have just been have just been friggin' awesome. And like there's another scene where you're going to a bar. <laughs> Or like an inn type place, and you end up seeing this. <laughs> you end up seeing this guy who's sitting up at a at a table, and his name is Dovan King. So for those of you who play Skyrim, you know that the Dova King is like the the Dragon Shout main character that you play as, and his name is Dovan King. And when you talk to him, it's like he's just so down and depressed because it's like everything around his world is changing. So. If you kind of get where that joke is going, he's basically talking about, oh my god, you know, the world was this at one moment, and now it's this the next moment, it's just driving me crazy. He's basically talking about the PC mods <laughs> that's going on with Skyrim. It's some funny stuff, man. I was just sitting there laughing. And then there's a guy who tends the bar, who's called John Frost. And the name of the bar is called The Wall or something like that, so Game of Thrones thing in there. <laughs> And you have a conversation with him, and it pretty much comes to a point where you basically end up telling him that he knows nothing because of like the way he's trying to explain a certain thing to you. I'm not trying to go into any any real spoilers or anything, but I'm trying to you know put out some real interesting tidbits out there, which I think is really cool. And of course, they end up having like a parody of the guy who was from Resident Evil Four, I think it was. Like, what are you buying? What are you selling? Got a lot of good things on sale, stranger. You know, that's exactly what he was. But he's like, what are you purchasing? You know, <laughs> instead of what are you buying? You know, so it's definitely, de definitely a, a really cool game. I really do think you guys should check it out. The only thing that kind of pisses me off is the fact that it ends up having it where uh, digital games are not created equal. You know, uh, Steam has different prices. Sony has different prices. Xbox have different prices. Granted, some digital games are the same when they come out. They are the same price when they come out. Some of them are. But then again, uh, different platforms will always change. And it's just like, oh my god, you know, why can't you just stick with one price point? I can understand if you're going to have it on sale, but then again, it's different price points. It's crazy. If I would have known that the Steam version was actually going to be cheaper, and I probably would have went ahead and got that one. Because, like, on PSN, it's nineteen ninety nine, On Steam, it's like, thir I think it's like 13 or 14 
something ninety nine, but it was on sale for like eleven something, or eleven ninety nine or something like that. I don't know, but whatever. But it just makes you think. I'm like, digital games aren't created equal. It all depends on what platform they're on. I mean, because everybody's like, oh, digital games are so much cheaper. No, that's not necessarily the case because whether you're buying physical or digital, especially if it's a AAA product, you're gonna end up paying sixty dollars ninety percent of the time, more than likely. So, you know, uh, that's been debunked. But I mean. It just, it just kind of blows my mind because I'm like, why couldn't it have just been the same price? I, I just, I, I don't get it. To me, I really do just think that it's, it's, it's just like corporate greed with Sony or Microsoft or whatever. I mean, that's that's what it has to be because, I mean, why would it be otherwise? Because you know these developers are going to want to make as much as they can off of them. So why couldn't it have been like 19.99 on Steam if it's 19.99 on PSN? It might be 19.99 on Xbox One, on Xbox Live, Xbox Live. The Xbox One Marketplace, I really have no clue. Maybe it might be, considering the fact that they're integrating with Windows 10 and all that. I don't know. Whatever. Check it out for yourself. Don't hold me to, uh, on that or nothing. But, yeah, it's definitely a game you should check out. And, obviously, that's the main one I've been talking about here. <laughs> because that's the main one that I feel like I really do have a lot to say on it, considering I've been playing quite a bit of it. But, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and end this now because I can only record so long on my phone before it wants to be a little prick and turn off on me because of the memory in it, you can only record so much. I think maybe like 15 minutes or something, and then it goes out, and it's already up to 11 minutes, 11 and a half minutes almost now, so fuck it. Anyways, but I'll go ahead and end this now, and I'm going to see what the hell is going on with this stupid freaking webcam thing, and hopefully I'll be back on that the next time I end up making another video. So I will talk at you taters later. Later, taters. Turn off!